<clears throat> All right. So before I talked, uh, I talked a little bit about the sacred order. You know, the order in which we need things to survive uh, in the wilderness. Uh, and I talked about fire. Now, in my experience and all the, you know, survival situations I've put myself in, all the primitive living, um, I found that as a whole, making, a, uh, constructing a good fire building apparatus can be one of the most difficult things. You know, if we think about something like water, if I find a water source, I find a water source. Yes, there's a little bit of processing that goes into, you know, ridding that water of chemicals and toxins, but that's fairly easy. Something like hunting is very straightforward, you know, with a very simple weapon like a throwing stick, which I'll talk about later. Um, you know, I can go out on the landscape and fairly quickly gather an animal. Uh, shelter building, you know, shelter building is, a, is once you become proficient at it, is a fairly easy skill because all of my raw materials are all around me and all I essentially gotta do is collect a bunch of sticks. With the fire making devices, you know, and there are approximately uh, 20 to 25 different primitive fire making devices that were used all over the world. Uh, however, there were a few that were universal, you know, meaning they were found all over the world, they were being used all over the world at the same time. Uh, the one I'm going to talk about right now is the hand drill fire. Now, you guys, have, I'm sure many of you have seen this demonstrated, and demonstrated poorly for that matter, in movies and things like that. Hand drill fire making is very simple. All we have is a stalk that we use, and typically for a hand drill we're going to use a woody stalked plant. Uh, just to name a few, things like mullein, goldenrod, horseweed, mule fat, yucca, any of the plants that kind of have a tough outer shell and a pithy center, known as woody stalk plants, uh, can be effective for a hand drill spindle. If you're really good at this skill, you can use things like branches from trees, but they are quite a bit harder. So the cool thing about the hand drill is as far as people who study such things, uh, they have figured out that this was the first fire making method that our ancestors used because there was many 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 years many eons where we were using fire as an animal to do things like heat our cook our food keep us warm give us light but for a very long time we didn't have the ability to make fire you know our ancestors would have to go out on the landscape find an area where fire was started naturally, maybe it was lightning strike or volcanic eruption or whatever, had to find a place where fire was lit naturally and then capture some of that fire and bring it back to their village. Or the other option was to find another group that had fire and steal it from them. So sometime between 100, 100 and 200,000 years ago, somebody in our ancestry figured out that you can essentially rub two sticks together to create fire whenever and wherever you need to. The hand drill is the oldest, is the oldest fire making method there is. And it's a fire making method that was universally found across the globe. Pretty much anywhere people were making fire, this was one of the methods they, they used. And as I said, there's about 20 something different fire making methods. A lot of those other methods other, other than the bow drill and the hand drill were very unique to certain environments. You know, there was a lot of different tropical fire making methods. So this is the most universal used all over the place. Now you may look at this and say, well, it's fairly simple. You know, I have this small thing I call a fire board here. Uh, I have the stock that I need to spin to create a coal with. So it looks fairly simple, but I will tell you this, out of all the fire making methods, this is one of the more difficult ones to master. This requires a lot of practice. So a couple things with this fire making method. Uh, usually what I'm looking for is, as I said, I'm looking for a woody stocked plant that's anywhere from a foot long to 16 inches long. Uh, you can see here this, uh, this um, goldenrod stalk is a little bit thicker than a pencil. 
some people like th really thick handrail stocks. Some people like them a little thinner than this. I find it to be personal preference. Whatever feels the most comfortable in your hands when you're spinning it. So this is one of the drawbacks of this fire making method is unless you're really practiced with it, it can hurt your hands pretty bad. You can get blisters. Um, so it does take a lot of time and a lot of practice to become proficient at this. And essentially what I'm doing, you know, all of these primitive fire making methods are known as fire by friction. You know, where I am using friction to generate heat. And what happens is when I take this stock and I spin it inside the fireboard, I am creating heat. The downward pressure I'm applying is creating heat. What I'm also creating is hot wood dust and plant dust as I'm spinning this. And my goal in order to make this effective is I need to create enough of that hot wood dust and then get it up to the right temperature to where it will clump together and turn into a coal. Then once I have that little coal, I can then take that and transfer it to a tinder bundle. Now a tinder bundle is basically just a bundle of really dry fibrous plant material. The key is with this, I'm looking for a lot of surface area. I want that coal, when I place it in this little nest, I want that coal to get in contact with as much surface area of this fluffy light plant material, which the coal will then catch that on fire as I blow into it. Off to my side, and if I was doing this in a true kind of primitive village setting, I would have off to the side somewhere my fire structure already built to where once I blow this tinder bundle into flames, I can stick it into that fire structure and get my fire to burn. You know, I would never blow this into flames and just put it on the ground and start piling sticks on top of it. I want to have a pre-made fire structure to put that tinder bundle into. So I, you know, as I said, this can be one of the more difficult fire making methods to master, but once you become proficient at it, it's always with you. You know, you can, I've been doing hand drill for 30 years and I can put this down for a year or two and pick up a hand drill kit and pretty reliable create a coal. So the more you practice at it, the better you'll be, the longer that skill will be internalized within you. But it does take practice. You know, anything in life, anything in the primitive skills world is about learning the proper technique and form and being able to repeat that. Hugely important with all the fire making, especially your technique, your form, and your material selection are absolute, the absolute key to making this work. So as I said, the way this works, I spin this spindle in a hole. I also have this little notch that I create in my fireboard that will collect that hot wood dust. And once I collect enough wood dust, then I need to get that up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit where that, once it gets 800 degrees Fahrenheit, it will clump together and turn into a coal, which I will then transfer to a tinder bundle. A couple pointers I can offer with any primitive fire making device is when you do this, you need to be relaxed. You need to breathe throughout the whole process. These fire making devices require very little effort, especially when we've mastered the technique and form. The problem is, is a lot of people when they're doing these, they forget to breathe and it becomes much more difficult. If I'm not taking in fresh air and I'm exerting energy, my body's building up lactic acid and it's going to make it a far more difficult process. So now kind of the start to this. The first thing we need to keep in mind is this fireboard I'm using. I need to keep this as stationary as I possibly can on the ground. Because, as I said, I'm trying to create hot wood dust and I'm trying to collect it in this little V-shaped notch. And if my fireboard is moving around, that dust is going to get knocked out of there. So a couple ways I do that, this, this technique where I'm just kind of sitting cross-legged and I have my foot keeping that fireboard steady is good enough. So what I have to do first before I can carve that notch to collect the dust I have to burn in the hole a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So a couple key things with this hand drill 
is I want to be spinning this thing as evenly as possible. I want both my hands to be working back and forth. And what I'm essentially doing when I'm spinning this is I am pushing in and down, in and down. And when I push in and down, I get that downward pressure I need to create that friction, to create that heat and that hot wood dust. So as I said, I'm just gonna start now, I'm gonna burn in this hole a little bit, and then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna carve a notch and then make a coal. And as I said, this is about technique and form. I want this spindle to be spinning straight up and down. I wanna make sure my hands are both working the same way. I don't want one hand to be moving slower than the other. So right now I'm just trying to burn it in a little bit. So right there you can see I've burned in that little hole and now I need to go ahead and carve my notch with my stone knife. And one thing you got to keep in mind is that a stone knife doesn't work so much like a regular knife. I need to more serrate this out. And I want to create a V-shaped notch if possible. I'm just trying to create that nice V-shaped wedge in there. All right, so now I've got that notch carved. Now I'm ready to start this pot process of creating a coal which I'll then transfer to my falling apart tinder bundle here. Now you need to treat these coals as a new life. When I make this coal, it's gonna be like a fragile little baby that I really gotta take care of. So now I'm just gonna warm this up. Thanks for being awesome. 